All right, everybody, this week we're going to look at polarity and welding. Kind of a supplement for the chapters that I sent out earlier in the week. Basic concept behind welding, electron flow is from the negative to the positive terminal where they land. This is where all the heat is. Very important concept. Let's look at what we started with so far. Gas tungsten arc welding, or TIG. TIG weld is what we've been doing the first couple of weeks, last uh, first two weeks steel, this week we're doing aluminum. TIG welding is a non-consumable process. That's really important to know. Make sure you take a little bit of time to make sure to note that. Non-consumable process operates in a certain way. Generally speaking, when we were welding steel, And this also works if you're welding copper, uh, a couple of other, titanium as well. You're going to use DC electronegative. That means that the gun, the cup of the gun, use your little TIG torch in your handle, the cup of the gun is attached to the negative terminal. The plate is clamped on with the ground terminal there to the positive side. And electrons just simply come out of the gun, slam into the plate, and as a result, melt the plate. That's where all of our heat is. So steel, titanium, copper, such and so forth. This week we're starting a new chapter, a new look at it. And this week we're going to specifically look at welding. What do you do when you have to weld aluminum? This week in lab, we're going to weld aluminum. We're going to just try to do an autogenous, a one-handed way. We're going to use the material. We're not going to add any filament metal. We're just going to use the base material to cover the joint for us. So aluminum welding. The problem with aluminum is that it's a sandwich. And on these edges here, you have aluminum oxide. And in the center, you just have aluminum. Aluminum oxide has a melting temperature of about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas aluminum itself is 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. That means that this skin here takes three times the heat to melt. So we don't want to melt it. We just want to get rid of it. So the first thing we're going to do with aluminum, take a wire brush and scrub all this off with a wire brush. That's not enough though, because while we're welding, we expose that aluminum to any oxygen at all, it immediately forms these little oxides. So in addition to that, we need to clean the aluminum continuously. So we need continuous clean. We're gonna do that, this is the oxide on there again. We're gonna do that by traveling an electron out of this, from the aluminum plate towards the gun, and this is going to knock a little bit of that oxide off for us. Since electrons go from negative to positive, that makes this plate negatively charged and this gun positively charged. It doesn't do anything for welding. It doesn't make any heat on the plate. As a matter of fact, it puts 70% of that heat up here and 30% of that heat down here. Not very useful. So that's just clean. So cleaning going to be when the charge is DC electric, electrode positive. That means again, the electrons are going towards the gun. In order to weld now, we need DC electrode negative. That's when the electrons are going down towards the plate. This is when we're welding. Simple enough. Since we're not going to sit there and flip the cords back and forth, we're going to put this machine in AC. And now we'll just have electrode positive for cleaning and electrode negative for welding. If you're not familiar with it, the AC side wave looks like this. And it does this side, a complete wave from here to here. 60 times a second. 
That's what we call hertz. This is per second. Cycles per second. Complete cycles, not just half waves. So, 60 on top, 60 on the bottom. The sine wave has a problem, and that is that we only get the heat that we need right here and right here at the apexes of those waves. That's not very useful. If we amp ramp it up more, then this whole section is useful. This whole section is useful, but now we're using a lot more heat. We're going beyond what we need. So rather than go with a smooth sine wave, we just go with the square sine wave. Now this entire region is useful. So we went from a smooth to a square side wave. Just like that. Now the entire apex is useful to us. However, the square sine wave that's balanced, that means that this is half the sine wave, and this is half of the sine wave. Our torch is going to be the same temperature as our plate. That's not real productive for us. We don't want that. So what do we do? We just shorten this period and add that period over here. So now this period, the cleaning half of the wave, is generally 25 to 35% of the overall cycle. Be higher at 35% if it's dirty. And the welding half now is going to be 75% to 65% of that cycle. 75% you want to get a little more heat out of it. So this is a modified square sine wave. Let's talk a little bit about the Hertz now. The Hertz is just complete sine waves per second. Our machines have a pretty good adjustability on this. We can run 20 to about 450 on some of our machines. The sound of your life, the hertz that we have here in the States are 60 hertz. So we're running that in the lab just so it kind of sounds normal. But why would we want to adjust the hertz? This is how it works. At 20 hertz, we're going to have a nice wide beam We're going to have really shallow penetration. At 450 hertz, we're going to have a very narrow beam with very deep penetration. So as the hertz go up, focuses that beam, gets that energy down on that plate a little bit more. That's really good. For instance, let's say you're trying to weld in a corner. Welding in a corner, you want to use a high hertz. And that's because at a low hertz, say 20 hertz, that beam's like this. And you're heating up all this extra plate, but all you really want is this little weld down here. At 450 hertz, 200 is common for most of our machines, we can get that beam to focus. We can just weld just where we want. That's how you focus the torch in the aluminum TIG welding process. There are other ways you can do it as well. You can sharpen your electrode. Keep in mind that when the heat's looking back and forth, and 70% of the heat is on this during DC, I'm sorry, during the electrode positive cycle, that is going to melt this tip away and form back to a wall. So sharpening your tip is not really useful unless you're going to sharpen your tip and then just nip the tip off like that. Just take it to a grinder and blunt it and then your ball will form right here. That'll help out a little bit. You can do some sharpening. Between this technique and adjusting the hertz, we should get that focus that we want. So that is gas tungsten arc welding with a non-consumable process, and that's polarity for such.
I think I'm going to stop there and just make one video for that. So gas tungsten, arc welding, monoaluminum, steel, how you sharpen, how you control it. Thank you much.